Welcome to Help Stop the Genocide in American Ghettos podcast. I'm your host, Emmanuel Barbie. This evening, we have a special guest, Missionary Savannah Rush. Okay, so the floor is yours. Um, well, hey, how are everybody doing? All the listeners that's listening in, um, my name is Savannah A. Rush. I am a missionary. Um, I'm also a kids leader at my new church. Um, I'm also jumping into the role of working with the kids and the youth. So um, I'm also um, an author, a co-author. I just got um, through being a co-author in a book called Feed Your Happy that you can find on Amazon. Um, and I also just got through with another collaboration. So I'm a co-author as well. Um, I'm also a podcaster of my own three shows, um, Darva King Podcast, um, A Father's Love, and also Stand for Oceans. All three of those podcasts is on um, Darva King Podcast. I basically let anybody come on if you want to discuss your business, discuss, you know, everything that God is doing in your life. And I also got a brand new one that I'm launching called A Father's Love. And that's for all the people, you know, that, you know, ever went through feeling abandoned or, you know, you really not, you didn't really get that love that you were looking for when it comes to a father. So that podcast will be about that. Anybody's welcome to come on that. And then I have a, the third podcast. Stand for Oceans podcast where um, I speak about, you know, stuff that's happening as far as plastic pollution and so on, because um, for all the people that don't know, I'm going to school, college to get my um, marine biology degree. I'm also, um, I also work at an aquarium where I teach people that can visit around the world about um, animals and everything. So that's a big passion of mine, the environment, everything like that. I'm um, also a blogger. I have my own blog called Savannah Inspirations, if y'all want to check that out as well. And I'm also a new business owner. I'll be launching my own boutique store, Adriana Boutique. That will be coming soon this year, so be on the lookout for that. But um, if y'all want to find anything like that, you can always go on my Facebook page, Savannah Adriana Rush. My website is on there and everything. I like to keep everything in one spot. So thankful to be here. I'm so thankful to be a part of everything that um man and guy Emmanuel Barbie is doing. He is truly making such an amazing impact in the community. And I pray everybody get involved in everything that he is doing. He is truly making a change. So if you can be a part of his film project and everything else that he is doing, that would be fantastic. And um, I don't really know what to really talk about, but I will say something that's been on my heart these past days and that'll be about peace and not wasting time Amen. by that is it's important to protect your peace in this season it's important to make sure you let the right people have access to you when it comes to your vision and the plans that god has in your life i feel like in this season especially a lot of people when it comes to mental health a lot of stuff like that been going on a lot of peace been like sabotaged so in this season, that's what God been dealing with me about, about peace. That's why I'm just able to function because I'm making sure I have the right people attached to me. I'm making sure I have the right people having access to me because there's so much to do with like people letting so many things sabotage their peace in this season. So God has been taking me through that scene. That's why I've been less active on my Facebook as I have because I just really been watching certain things. I've been really like, I ain't gonna say having a moment of being like you know worried about me but i'm that type of person i always make sure everybody's good and i have to make sure that i'm good too so god's been dealing with me about that and also about wasting time he's also been really heavy on my heart about that because for i don't know my grandma passed tuesday you have so, my condolence thank you so much and so that really put in the respect that it's important not to waste time. Like God has so many incredible things for us to do in this season. You know, he had so many, we got so many gills and purpose and assignments on our lives. So it's important not to waste time. And I feel like we do, we waste time on little things like, and we waste time on, you know, worrying about, you know, people and stuff. So God's been working with me when it comes to my time. That's why I don't deal with certain people. I don't deal with certain stuff because I refuse for my time to be wasted. I refuse to not do the things that God has for me. So it's important this season to make sure you don't burn yourself out doing things that God didn't call you into. Because I feel like sometimes we take things on ourselves when God didn't tell us to do that. We put too much stuff on our plate. 
So in this season, it's time to, you know, just really pray, get in that, you know, that spot with God and ask him, is this something that you want me to do? It is something that, you know, I just jumped in myself. So he's been working with me with that. So I've been making sure I don't waste time. I want to be happy. I want to lift other people. I want to inspire other people. I want to support other people. I want to love people. That's my big thing. I want to love people, support people, and not waste any time. So that would be all right here that I got so far right here. But man of God, I give it to you and we'll just, you know, go back and forth. That's okay. Fine with me, woman of God, because um, like I say, I like to share my platform. I don't want to make it where I'm just on here just talking about myself. Some people <laughs> do say that, oh, you know, what you're trying to do, you know, you're being selfish. I'm like, how so? You know, I don't have any children. Um <laughs> The Grassroots Community Activist Institute of Chicago is about um, trying to do something positive in the Black community first. And foremost, we're about trying to, um, we want to strengthen the Black family first and foremost, because it's that's where a lot of the problems are coming from, is coming from the homes. Right. We can get that taken care of. That's what my uh, Christian business is all about. We want to connect with the Black family. Help work with, um, I would say, um, Black families that want more out of life, first and foremost. Because over here, uh, woman of God, I'm about raising the bar. That's what I mean when I do this. This is not a gang sign. This is about me saying that's what this business is going to be all about, raising the bar, raising the standards. You know, um, like I say, uh, I've been overlooked, you know, for the past 31 years, you know, I've been reaching out to people here in my own city as well as, you know, online. But I thank the Lord for people such as yourself, you know, you're supportive, you know, you come on the show, you know, you it's a blessing. I like that. So you encourage me. Also, Sister Renee, even though she prefers to be behind the scenes. So that's good support. Yeah. And um, I'm grateful for that. But I'm asking, you know, the Lord to bless me with more people so that way we can get the process you know rolling and you know speed things up right. um yeah you're right you know wasting time is not good and i feel like i hate to go there and say this but i'm being honest and real i feel like i am wasting time here in america but god is telling me to get it started here in chicago because i don't understand why he wants me to do that but i'm a heed to you know the vision get it started right. here for credibility Reach out to those uh, African immigrants here within the United States to come forth to work with us because we're going to visit those 10 African nations that I keep talking about. But we got to get it um, uh, popping here in America first, especially here in Chicago for credibility. Um, all we want, like, again, uh, we want to, you know, help strengthen, you know, the black family, help improve the African-American community. So that way we can do international trade with our brothers and sisters on the continent. And woman of God, I'm going to go there. I mean, if you know, people want to stay here and stay in America for the rest of their life and, you know, want to continue to quote unquote fight. Our people have been fighting and marching and protesting for uh, 60 years back in the white supremacist financial elite for freedom, justice and equality. And where's that gotten us? And then other people, you know, say to me, well, Emmanuel, um, what makes you think your ideas is going to work? Ain't nothing else out here is really working. So what makes yours different than what everybody else is doing? Well, I tell them up front that, you know, uh, this is based on my experience. I used to do uh, street uh, ministry for two years. So I have experience. I know how it is out there. Plus, I came from the inner cities. It's about trying to first in my Christian business, the Grassroots Community Activist Institute of Chicago, we're going to screen people, vet, vet people. We want to make sure we separate ourselves from those that, uh, I would say, degenerates, hardened criminals, urban terrorists, pedophiles. I don't care how much money they have. You know, you, if they degenerates, if they have different... Um, I would say morals than us. I can't associate with those type of people. Right. I'm not trying to knock the church, but it's real. You know, it's a lot of churches that's in the inner cities. 
If there's so many churches that's there, how come the, there's no real big improvement in the inner cities? Because a lot of our churches nowadays, they have become compromised. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, they're like, hey, you know, let people in and stuff like that. They don't care about screening and vetting people. And so we look at what happens, you know, with the, um, I would say with the Catholic church, I'm just using them, for example, it's not just them, but, you know, the sex scandals, you know, about, you know, how the, you know, the priests, you know, was molesting uh, underage kids and stuff. That's horrible. So that gives secular people an excuse not to, you know, want to believe in God. Now, what I want to do is in my Christian business, um, I do want to say that um, I'm not, I'm not too happy with the, um, I would say, organized religion. In my business, we're not going to be beating people upside the head and tell them about, oh, you got to get saved. You got to be saved and all that stuff. That's a personal relationship that that person is going to have with the Lord. I want people to know up front that here you can serve God freely without being, you know, um, bound by, you know, man's standards of how you uh, should have a relationship with God. No, because nobody's going to die for you. You have to die for yourself. Mm. So uh, in my so say that again, please. I said that part. Correct. Yeah. So what I want to do with mine is, like I say, I want to screen people first and foremost, because we got to get these because, you know, a lot of people get confused. You know, you have people that's let's say, for example, a Jehovah Witness. They call themselves Christians, but yet right. they, don't, they don't believe in the Holy Spirit. Hmm. And they have different, you know, um, and they use, um, yes, um, the Watchtower. They don't really use the Bible, but basically they just trying to say that you're going to be reincarnated and all that stuff. And I don't agree with that. So, yes. So we want to make sure that we that everybody's on the same page in my Christian business. And I keep saying mine because um, Jesus Christ is the one that gave me the vision and I claim ownership. Amen. And since Black America, I have to keep going there. They rejected my vision and plan for the past 31 years. What has it proved? Ain't nothing changed over here. I'm doing the best that I can to do something positive for my racial group here in America before I cut and run to Africa. And but I don't I, mean Africans, I want go say that again, please. I don't mean to cut you off or anything. You know, you were saying that they reject the vision. It, it's, it'll definitely happen, especially when they know you're trying to do a, a certain change. People will definitely reject it. True. True. But I'm just saying, uh, one woman of God, just mark my words. Once this organization is up and running here in Chicago and, you know, I start making money and, you know, we make a positive impact in the community. Mark my words, everybody in Chicago is going to want to be a part of it. But ain't nothing changing um, on my end. Everybody is going to be vetted. Even when I'm dead and gone, that's going to be, that's in the bylaws. Right. We're going to check because we want to make sure that we don't have some anyone that's going to come in to try to undermine us. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, the, sad, the saddest part is it's our own people. I'm not getting pushed back from white people. This is coming from my own people. Yep. So the enemy, you know, he's been hitting me hard, like, you know, trying to put in, in my ear, oh, you know, you're wasting your time. You know, this is not going to happen, blah, blah, blah. And I just rebuke that mess. Hey, Amen. That's because right. I rebuke, it. I rebuke it because I'm what I'm saying, uh, woman of God, is that I'm seeing the positive things that's happening right now that's going on on the African continent. I'm grateful. I'm not, I'm not trying to go off topic, but I'm saying, for example, and I'm going to talk about that. Um, the coup in Niger uh, this week. But I'm glad that those people are stand, our brothers and sisters are standing up against, you know, France. They're, France has taken 90% of their resources and they're only giving them 10%. And yeah. that's been happening since the 1500s. So they still paying a colonial tax. Wow, that's crazy. But that's what's keeping those people in power. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's not just Francis, other things like that. And I'm like I said, I'm gonna talk about that later this week. But um, I just want our people to understand this stuff is real. So I try to combine spirituality with what's going on, you know, in reality. Um, yes, I would like for people to be saved and things like that. That's important. 
but I want to be able to show people the love of the love of God, you know, in here, right. you know, by helping, you know, our brothers and sisters that's in those high crime gang and drug infested communities, because um, it was designed by the white supremacist financial elites to have them in that type of environment in the first place. Mm -hmm. Now I can go, I'm not going to go into all that stuff about the politics and all that stuff, you know, because technically this is supposed to be for you, but, and I do want you to talk a little bit more about your book, if you don't mind, you know, try to get people to know more about it. But basically, um, woman of God, all I can tell you is that I'm grateful again for all the rejections that I have received because it's motivating me to want to do, keep on doing what I'm doing. But only thing I need, woman of God, I hate to go there, but I have to say, yes, I have a revised book. This is based on my experience. This is the also the foundation of my Christian business. Um, I have a virtual store. But I can't make people buy the book. The book is only six dollars and twenty five cents. Hmm. And it's been on Amazon for 11 years, still barely selling. Wow. Yeah. So some people be like, oh, well, what are you doing then for the community? What are, I might like, read my story. That's what I've done. And also what I'm trying to do. But. Woman of God, I have to go there. They will support, the black community will support um, the dope man. Hmm. Now, the dope man, he's selling his his uh, street drugs laced with fentanyl. Yep, that's what time we're, that's what time we're in. And he's like, here, take these drugs and die. Black people are just dying. It's sad. Our people are, um, you know, I'm just paraphrasing and God's word says uh, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Right. And all I'm doing, I'm trying to sell knowledge. So this is my business. But anyway, now I'm trying to turn my book into a film. Mm -hmm. I have 1,770 1, people that's on my Facebook friends list. And yet only five people have donated to our GoFundMe page for our film project. Wow. So I'm just saying, I'm doing the, what I can. So, and the reason why I'm using um, our GoFundMe page, so that way people would know what I'm being transparent. I want people to know where the money is going to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's all. But anyway, woman of God, I'm still grateful for all of this because again, I want to make sure that none of my members would never have to endure this kind type of foolishness because uh, in my Christian business, I'm going to make sure that we have our support systems in place and we've gone to um, help fund people. I would say the youth for now, because this is for them in the first place. They're the ones that's going to be in the films. But anyway, we want to make sure that uh, we help fund their dreams. Right. Support them. So that way, they, this is what discourages people. They're like, Dad, we're trying to do something, but we're not getting no support. It happens. And I'm gonna still keep my Christian my Christian business at the grassroots level because I want to help our brothers and sisters come up in life. Right. You want to see them win. And, and I would like to hope that the um Gurkayo Chicago can be just like uh a, grow into a franchise just like McDonald's. Mm, right. That's why I want to take it to the African continent. But before I go to Africa, I want to make sure we get this thing popping in America first. So that way we can be received. And um, so I can bring tangibles uh, to my uh, group members from Gurkai of Africa. Mm -hmm. And I want us to meet each other in person, not just behind the computer. I'm grateful for the technology. But we have to meet each other in real life, you know. And again, I want to make our uh, this Christian business um make our presence known, you know, on the west side of Chicago, mm -hmm. as I've written in my revised book, and, and hopefully expand to the south side of Chicago, to, again, to make Chicago that model. Right. But as far as me, um, you know, trying to take it to other cities and stuff, if that happens, cool. If not, that's fine. But at least I tried. But I, I don't want to, you know, waste any more time, you know, um, here in America. Um, I want to, once it's up and running, I'm going to turn it over to qualified black middle class professionals, and I want to take my talents 
to South Africa. That's where I'm going to shoot my second film. That's where I'm also, I'm going to lead by example. I'm applying for dual citizenship because Black people, I mean, Black Americans, we're in a um, very, I would say, um, unique situation in, the, in this day and age. Now, if some people, if they want to remain living here in America, that's fine. Fine and dandy. But what I'm saying is that God is giving me that vision to, you know, we're going to have to leave. Right. The writing on the wall is, is getting worse for Black Americans here in America. And we got to reclaim our ancestral homeland, which is Africa. And we have to network with our brothers and sisters on the continent. So that way they, we can know each other and they can re receive us. Uh -huh. And woman of God, hold on. I, I got to go there. Um, when I uh, set up my uh, Christian business in South Africa, um, that, that would be one place that people can go to visit and things like that. And, you know, consider... Um, applying for dual citizenship and living there. But again, remember, I want to do it more than in than just one place. We're going to do it in 10 African nations, including South Africa. So right. I would say in East Africa, like Kenya, um, Ethiopia, um, Uganda, mm -hmm. Tanzania, you know, those places there too. Now, Tanzania, you know, they speak... Um, Oh boy, Swahili. So yeah, they don't speak English. So you know, you might need a most likely need a translator. But um, at least I want to have give our people, you know, um, more exposure to Africa. That's all I'm saying. Not just in one um, place. Right. And what we want to do is help you know bring our talents there and help build up the African economy mm -hmm. because. The white supremacist financial elites, they're glad that black people are stand, staying here in America being treated as third and fourth class citizens because they figure, oh, you don't want to go back to, you don't want to go to Africa. Africa is poor, it's, it's um, a lot of poverty, a lot of uh, disease and wars. But the Europeans are still there. Right. Like I say, France. So for me, for me, um, all I can say is for me in my house, I'm reclaiming my ancestor homeland, which is Africa. And it starts with uh, South Africa. The whole continent belongs to melanated people in the first place. And that's where, but at least I, before I cut and run, I want to try to help my people that's here in America for credibility. Because it's easy to sit up here and, you know, keep talking about going to Africa and all that stuff. But, you know, if you're not going to go, then you're just talking. I back up everything I say to the fullest if given a chance. Right. Um, I do want to say too uh, to my listeners, just in case that they um, missed this point, I was exposed to Pan Africanism, you know, in my youth, and I, you know, it was good. It, I liked some of the stuff it was saying, and you know, I, I did like Marcus Garvey. But the problem I had with Marcus Garvey is that one, he never went to uh, Africa him, himself. He went to Europe. And that's why he died. He died in Europe. But um, no, he never went to um, Africa. Also, he re received um, donations from the Ku Klux Klan. So I have a problem with that. You know what I'm saying? Like for me, you know, I have standards. I'm not going to accept money from um, the white supremacist financial elites because Gurkhaya of Chicago is more than just a new business endeavor. This is going to be a new system that we as black people have to build. And this is going to help turn around our situation um, throughout the black world. Mm -hmm. Because the main thing about us is that we're going to use, like I say, um, we want to do trade, international trade with each other. That's going to help improve, you know, um, the inner cities. Now, one thing I do want black people to under or our people to understand um, but by us living here in America, we can't stop um, the white supremacist financial elites from, from gentrifying our neighborhoods. Oh. That's the sad part. You know, we built uh, Black Wall Street, you know, they bombed that and, you know, that was horrible. Yeah. They have um, the laws on their sides, like 
uh, eminent domain. That means the government can come in and, you know, um, take over your commute, buy, buy up your homes and stuff like that so that they can have um, expressways. But they're not doing that to, um, let's say, the Chinese um, uh, community, the Latino community. They're always targeting us as Black people. And that's what it's a sad thing. I hate to see that Black people always, you know, they want to, we want to keep talking about, we want to stay here and fight. But if the laws are against you, and our black politicians are selling, you know, in the pockets of the white supremacist financial elites, then, you know, that's that's a bad situation to be in. Absolutely. So, um, woman of God, I don't want to take up the more uh, of the show. Can you please uh, tell me a little bit about your book? And tell my listeners about your book, please. Um, before I do say anything about the book, I just want to tell you that I think everything that you're doing is amazing. And I also like, even when you was talking, it was just like, you know, for me to tell, you know, just to keep going, don't throw in the towel. And, you know, like the people that are for you, they'll support the vision. They'll see the vision, you know, don't slow down for anybody. I, like I said, I'm in that type of season. If nobody, if the right people will catch on. If the wrong people, don't worry about them. You know, keep work, walking into your purpose. Keep walking to the vision that God has for you. Because like I said, the right people will understand. You know, they'll understand what you're doing, where you're going. And yeah, you know, just don't slow down for nobody. Stay in your peace. What you're doing is not wasting time or anything. Because like I said, even when I talked to you a while back, since then so much, you know, you know, so much of your business has grown. I have seen it, like even you. And, and just by talking to you, anybody can see where your heart is that you want to make a change. But like I said, if they're like, you know, if that's who God done assigned for you, they'll they'll understand everything that you're doing. Amen. The book, Feed Your Happy, um, I'm a co-author in that book. It's basically about what feeds your happy. Meaning, what gives you happiness? What gives you peace? What gives you joy? Because we're in a time now that's important. But like that goes back around to what I was saying about how God been really, he been really like trying to make me focus on, you know, the peace and not wasting time and feed your happy because I'm a co-author in that. I'm a co-author in it. Um, the visionary that book is, her name is Dr. Um, Prophet Natasha Jones, that's one of my sis, my mentor. I'm in her book, and Feed Your Happy. And it's basically about what are you letting feed your happy? Like, are you in your word? Are you, you know, um, what are the things that brings you joy? Because I feel like in this season, we concentrate a little bit on the chaos. We don't concentrate on the things that bring us joy, the things that, you know, fuels us. We don't, we don't really concentrate on that. So that book is basically giving you the list and the instructions on ways you know that things that you can do to make yourself happy because a lot of the um the co-authors in that book we done experience you know of always making sure everybody else is happy always making sure everybody else is good always making sure that everybody you know you know basically are being their best selves but we sometimes lack a doing it for ourselves so that way when you lack a doing it for yourself you either get drained get burnt out and you know you're not doing the things that make you happy and I like to call this season this is the season to be selfish in that way and what I mean by be selfish in that way is make make sure you're happy make sure you're good make sure you're you're doing the things that God is calling for you to do because that's the way that's the way you when you make sure you're happy you're you're in a position to where you're able to walk into the things that God has called for you to do you're able to have that certain shine about you, have that certain glow about you when you're making sure you're happy, you're making sure that you're good and stuff like that. So that's what that book is about, uh, Feed Your Happy. And then we had another book. It's been so many books that we have, but basically that's what they've been talking about, about your happiness, about, you know, what are you doing? Are you making sure every morning that you're having that relationship with God? Because to me, that's the only way I can be happy. When I have a relationship with God, that take care of my happiness. Like his happy, like when I'm happy, he's the reason for my happiness. If I need some strength, God is the person that gives me strength. So that's basically what that book is about. And 
Yeah, basically this whole year, that's what my whole season has been about, about my peace, about my happiness, about who I'm letting have access to me because a while back I didn't do that. And so in this season, I'm very selfish about that. Like if somebody says, Savannah, you're being selfish about, about you being happy. Yes, I am because I have been that person to where somebody has told me I, in order for me to be happy, I have to make sure other people are good. And that's not correct. Yes, sir. Make sure other people are good, but you have to make sure you are good too. So I, it's not selfish to take care of yourself. It's not selfish to walk into the things that God has for you. God don't want you on this on this planet to be miserable. Where does that say that in the Bible that He wants us to be miserable? He wants you to be happy. He wants you to, you know, be able to hear His voice clearly. That's not selfish to take care of yourself. And I wish somebody had told me that a while back. I wish somebody had said, look, it's not selfish to take care of yourself. Because too long, like I said, I don't make sure everybody else was good. I made sure everybody else was happy. And I really missed out on a lot of things that God had for me. I really missed out on a lot of things to where now this season's kind of like catch up season. And I'm really like, you know, I'm not gonna let nobody stop me from walking into the things that God has for me. So that's what this season has been. So that's why I've been really into my word. I've been really into staying connected to the people that care about me as much as I care about them, making sure I spend every day, not just Sundays with God, but every single day, because I like to say Sundays are not just God's day. Every day is God's day. From the time your eyes open up to the time you go to sleep, God all through the day, because I don't know about anybody that's listening, but I cannot go through my day without God in it. I have to talk to him when I'm eating my cereals in the morning. I have to talk to him when I'm headed to work. I have to talk to him 24 hours of the day. So, you know, if there's anybody that's been like, you know, how do you get through the day with God? You cannot not get through the day without God. So that's what that book is about. Feed your happy. And Yeah. Well, um, woman of God, tell my uh, listeners how they can find you on Facebook, please. Um, you can find me on Facebook. I only use like really one page, and that's Savannah Arjuna Rush. Um, I post everything on there. Um, Emmanuel probably know I be posting a lot of stuff on there. My blogs on there because um, it basically shows you everywhere that you can find me. Like on my on my Facebook page you can find my Instagram on there. That's basically what I use is Facebook and Instagram and also my website links on there. I like to keep it very simple and regular so you don't have to be trying to find me everywhere. But yeah, my podcast is on Anchor and Spotify, Breaker, um, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, um, Radio Public. So it's not hard to find any one of the podcasts is on my blog is on Savannah Inspiration, Savannah underscore Inspiration, if you want to check out the blog. And, yeah, that's everywhere you can find me at. Amen. I just want to say to you, too, before um, I let you go, um, again, I created this platform because I refuse to be ignored. So that's how come now I'm doing a video podcast. I want people to see me, and I want people to hear me loud and clear. Uh, usually I read, um, you know, my speeches without shame. I just want to make sure that I'm staying on point and, you know, what I'm talking about. But um, bottom line is that uh, I want to move from behind this computer, but I'm grateful to the Lord, you know, for this new technology. You know, I thank God for the uh, internet. He allowed me to meet people such as yourself. Uh, through the internet, I was able to um, create my online groups and now I'm in the process of moving my groups from behind the computer. Uh, again, you know, we want to take our story first to the big screen. Mm -hmm. um, so if people want, my listeners, if you want to know where you can find all my information in terms of my revised book, my virtual store, um, our GoFundMe page for our film project, we will have that listed uh in the comment section below this video podcast. Um, Heavenly Father, I come before you as a, humble as I know how, Lord. Thank you again, Lord, for another um, wonderful um, podcast. Thank you, Lord, for my guest um, speaker coming on here. Lord, bless her. Um, give her her heart desires. I encourage um, more people, Lord, that's on my Facebook friends list, Lord, to 
uh, come on this uh, podcast, Lord, to, to promote their their books, their business. Because I want to use this as a way for us to um, just connect with each other. Over here, we're drama free. We don't have time for all the foolishness. Um, zero tolerance that we're going to have in this Christian business. We want to uh, have make it fun for youth, Lord, to bring them back to you, Lord. Uh, we want to create positive um, films, bl well, black empowerment films, as well as po making uh, positive music. And uh, thank you again in advance, Lord, that uh, through the through this Christian business, it's going to help improve the African American community. It's also going to help um, bridge the gap between the African immigrant community, um, the, the Afro Brazilian community, um, and also the Afro Caribbean community. We want to be able to learn how to get along. That's what this Christian business is about for us to heal from. Um, I would say enslavement as well as colonization and also to bring it to the um, African continent and spread it to 10 African nations. Thank you again for this big task. Um, just give me the strength, Lord, to um, endure um, what I'm going through, Lord. I don't want the, uh, that rejection to um, stop me from going forth. 31 years, Lord, you see I've been faithful, Lord. Uh, standing on your word, um, trying to, I wrote my revised book, created the virtual store, trying to generate capital, Lord. But, um, and also, Lord, I'm paying out of pocket, Lord. I'm on a shoestring budget, but yet I'm still paying out of pocket since um, 2010 for this uh, business title, where I'm not getting um, a lot of support from, but just thank you anyway for it. I know that you're going to reveal yourself in your timing. Um, please, again, Lord, just provide that 21st century miracle on my behalf and let this type of Christian business win souls uh, back to your kingdom and help advance your kingdom, Lord, through this Christian business. In Jesus name, I pray. Amen. And that's going to conclude our show for today. Thank you all for listening. Peace and blessings.